It's the 12th of April and we are currently volunteering at Anthony's place. Here we are at Vito San Maria and you can see that people are building a bathroom for more volunteers here so you can either have a camper van or a tent and you can stay here when the bathroom is ready. Anthony is a very cool guy. He is helping Vito Maria with changing this land which was where wheat was growing only and now there will be like a syntropic farming, permaculture, so different uh, concept of growing plants like a food forest so it will be very interesting to see what will what the future will bring the interesting thing is that um, Anthony is not is, he's not the owner of the land but he's putting like free labor inside and then also wants to have more volunteers to come and um, change this land into a, a nice place where things just grow better without all the GMO wheat the next thing coming up here is the, the irrigation system so I'm guessing that they will pump up this water from the pond up to the top and then have a drip system installed to be able to irrigate the whole area because tomatoes and many other young plants need water. So as you can see the soil is pretty dry, it's cracking up and some of it is clay soil, some is some of it's not so and also getting out these some of these weeds come out pretty easily and some not. We've been doing some weeding, planting tomatoes yesterday and today we've planted some hazelnuts, a newly planted hazelnut in this row together with other hazelnuts, that's Anthony and you can see that the, there are other plants growing around here, either squash or and or bean and other very closely planted so we will have a ground cover also from the tomatoes tomatoes are not here, they're up there so this is how it looks with a fresh tomato and there are just tomatoes all the, right, all the way and the tomatoes will generate uh, ground cover too so they will produce fruit and make a lot of ground cover um, usually when you grow tomatoes for producing fruit you will have some kind of thing that the tomatoes can climb on but this is just a different concept and I like it too it's very nice, it's cool and also interesting with this type of border so when Vito comes with his mower and mowing all these ales uh, it will be easier for him to see where the rows are because if you look up there it's like completely filled with weeds and it might be difficult to see when you're mowing this is how the wheat straw looks bundled up and these branches that make the borders are from all the olive trees that are here I think there are around 600 on this property 600, 600 olive trees they are harvested um, in the fall around November as far as I remember first olive harvest is beginning of October and then, uh, pretty much goes through end of, uh, end of November beginning of December depending on how much how much uh, how, how quickly it can be done all right and yeah we're just putting some uh, some of this straw on top of uh, the we've, we've got we planted three sisters which is the corn the, the squash and then hopefully the beans will sprout out mm -hmm. uh, and we just got beans just from the store in a bag because that's a North American thing not so much a Mediterranean thing so a lot of these practices are very new here people are curious uh, there's a permaculture community here in Sicily um, that we're uh, you know in, engaging with so there is a lot of um, experimentation happening on the island and it's a uh, changing climate so people are noticing that uh, the weather patterns are getting disturbed and so for example this has been a very dry spring mm -hmm. 
hasn't had a lot of rain. Um, it was also a very warm winter. Mm -hmm. And which is the opposite of last year. Last year we had a cold and wet winter and uh, that gave us different, different challenges. So yeah, we're just uh, first year starting out, seeing what works. Uh, this is a part of a bigger centropic agroforestry system, but before we put in, uh, you know, a hundred avocado trees, we have to build up the soil and do a lot of prep work and, uh, get, get the irrigation set up. So in the meantime, we're, uh, doing what we can, um, low, low risk. So we've been planting Moringa seeds, which, uh, is more of a subtropical, uh, subtropical plant. And I have experience growing that in Florida, and uh, that's you know very common around Asia, India, Africa, Latin America. Uh, it's a kind of like a survival tree where you can like just survive off off the leaves. So we we had a um, we had an interesting year last year where we basically started about a thousand moringa trees from seed in a nursery, and then we transplanted um, them. And you'll see down below this is. This is the newest, these rows right here is what we've installed this spring. Last fall down below, which we can go to now, that was uh, installed last fall. And we had a big week long celebration event. Watch, your, watch yourself there. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately the Moringas didn't do so well when we transplanted them. Uh, one, uh, the cold probably the biggest thing they don't it, even though it kind of we touch a little bit of the freeze line here it doesn't snow we get a little bit of frost um, but when the moringa trees are really young they're really uh, sensitive and fragile and they can uh, die easily so now we're kind of entering into the transition zone where we've got this big lake here uh, watch out so we've L lake or pond because I said it was a pond before uh, it could be anything, a retention pond, a uh, reservoir. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is kind of like the dividing line where we did very simply, we just put some, we've got some, uh, we've got some, some squash here. Mm -hmm. We just, squash had plenty of seeds, so we just put a bunch of squash in. We did another Moringa um, seeding, direct seeding, but because it's been so dry, uh, nothing's really sprouted yet. Uh, I did find uh, one up there. So yeah, we just made these uh, like lines on contour as much as possible. But you know, there's a lot of different shapes. So even here, you can see where there's a big depression. So this gets a lot of a lot of water pooling. Mm -hmm. And so over time, we'll get better with the drainage, both retention and drainage. And so if we come over here, we can see where we had uh, our uh, our our um, our row. And so, so what's going on here? There is a, like a... So uh, the idea is we've put in... Um, so each 1.5 meters is supposed to be a Moringa tree. So you can see where we have these holes and depressions. Mm -hmm. This is where... Th here's a Moringa tree. Mm -hmm. But you can see it's... This thing is totally... It, it's, it's actually still moist, but it's too moist. So the Moringa likes good drainage. This here has uh, too much clay, so the water doesn't really drain well. Mm -hmm. So it could be it could be interesting for um, for uh, for rice cultivation longer term, mm -hmm. where anything below the lake we can flood uh, periodically. Um, so that's one idea. But you can see here where we've we've done this heavy mulching with the straw. It's kind of suppressed a lot of the weeds. Um, what has survived? Uh, I saw uh, we so basically what we're doing in this agroforestry system is a consortium where we've got these moringa trees and then we're we're planting the aromatics. So here's a rosemary that we just took a cutting and then put it in the ground. Um, it's surviving. It's not doing that great. Um, but what we can do here is now that we have like kind of a hole, we can put in some better soil and uh, reseed, uh, put in a drip ir irrigation system later on. And then we have these huge rows where we could be cultivating uh, artichokes. Um, actually, you know, it's interesting is because it rained a little bit last night, so you can still see like how much water kind of 
but yeah i mean right now the biggest challenge is just uh taking out a lot of the um, you know quote unquote weeds but these these things right here uh need to get taken out so it's just a process uh but we've got you know probably 12 of these rows here and it's just a you know centropic agroforestry it's meant to have human it's designed with human interaction in mind so the whole goal is to get people interacting with the system hmm. and i haven't been down here we've been focused so much on the getting the top row done but you can kind of see uh, here's some rosemary right here so you know stuff is growing we've got <laughs> a poor little moringa tree yeah this thing looks so 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 bad but um you know here here we go hmm. you can see see the little stem down here mm -hmm. but same same thing hmm. we, we're getting the same just turns to mush mm -hmm. so in fact we need to because we we dug a hole down so it created like a basin and the water pooled mm -hmm. which is not what we wanted mm -hmm. um so now we've got the feedback so now we can build up higher mm. and then we can put that put this tree up here mm -hmm. and then it'll be able to grow a taproot down below mm -hmm. ideally mm -hmm. so um yeah it's just a matter of um constant maintenance mm -hmm. and yeah we can just keep on walking through i haven't been down here in a while but you know like we've already got a cover oh wait okay so this is the bed here mm -hmm. so we're standing on the bed i can just kind of tell you know like where things are so here's another moringa tree every every 1.5 meters so we can find our way back right mm -hmm. but already you know how deep is this mulch this is protecting the soil it's mm. getting rest that's and, good yeah yeah and then uh this can come in here with a weed whacker or something and mm. take this edge down mm -hmm. uh, but in the summertime uh june july august september this is going to look like a desert it's going to be so um dry and uh brown and then so basically it's like a reset so what's going to what's going to survive so yeah you can just see kind of how down below we, we've got a nice little angle and yeah uh, it's it's a fun experiment so you also have people coming because you you know a lot of people around here you have like a yes. influence on the community and you get the people to come like you said last time 20 people were here yeah so this is uh, basically an anchor site and a demonstration site uh, for regenerative agriculture in the region as a foundation for a regional regenerative economy and so part of that is getting people to come and learn and then we're also collaborating with other farm projects in the area and on the weekends we'll go and rotate between different farms and do projects uh, like action days that need a lot of hands so for doing um, tree plantings one of the things we did recently was uh, going to a friend's um, site and in between her olive trees we were planting a, a permaculture guild with uh, terracotta pots in the soil um, something called a whole Oh yeah, oh yeah, I think. Um, so yeah, getting more of these experiments and then also building up some reciprocity and trust within the community and learning how to share and and, uh, and collaborate better because the, um, the current uh, culture and economic system is private property, private ownership, which then turns into kind of uh, large-scale corporate um, management. So how do we provide more opportunities for people to get onto the land, get farming together, because this, I mean, uh, Vito and Maria, the, the, the owners here, I mean, they're, they're retired. Who is going to take care of not just this property, but this whole valley here. And then also if we look at this mountain, we've got to reforest that mountain because it burns every year. And so this is a mirror of, okay, well, we're doing the regenerative agroforestry agriculture in the valley, and that's going to, um, also translate into reforestation on the mountain because we're having to deal with this fire situation which is forcing everybody to mm, reflect and uh, reevaluate their relationship to nature and so that's a like a forcing function that is like causing adaptation yeah. so that that is the kind of the the container that we're in here and 
yeah, we've got all the we've got all the ingredients, and it's just going to take a little bit of time and perseverance. But uh, this is, um, I mean, I chose this life because this is how I want to live, close mm -hmm. to nature, and you know, around people, um, family, and friends, and yeah. When do you reckon is the like most difficult time here with the burning and smoke? It's interesting because uh, this, because uh, we're right next to the coast, and this is a popular tourist destination. In August, middle of August is basically the big Italian holiday. So when this place is packed full of tourists and and uh, people coming on vacation, also is like one of the hottest times of the year, and also one of the highest um, kind of like uh, yeah d dangerous times for the Shiroko, which is the African wind and sandstorm that comes by so it's not every day it's just when this weather pattern comes through everything is on high alert and we've got hot spots in the mountains that are constantly burning so now we're getting more organized um, basically creating like a citizen guardian citizen watch where when the weather is uh, when when the weather is dangerous we can set up shifts where people can go and kind of watch uh for fires because when the when you can see a fire starting you can go there immediately and and um, basically put it out before it gets out of control because you know you can see this whole ridge here was burning and then you've got these airplanes and helicopters flying over uh, which costs like eight thousand euros an hour to operate and so anyways the whole situation is unsustainable and so now we're having to like as a community figure out how to not like all die <laughs> so, so you believe if we if the mountains are reforested the problem will be smaller well i mean it's all the it's the the mountain and the sea and the rivers and everything we have to look at it holistically mm -hmm. um at the bioregional level which uh, bioregion is just the the biological definition of of our of our borders as opposed to like political uh boundaries so it's just us becoming more aware of what our you know what is our neighbor doing what is up the river what's down the river uh look thinking about the watershed and um so yeah we start on the fractal micro level and then that reflects back up to the to the macro level great thank you very much for showing us around <laughs> and uh, good luck with your project i really hope it uh, will succeed and uh all the best to you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been great having you and Lek here, Greg. And uh, this is our first, uh, my first experience hosting Workawayers. And yeah, how do we kind of do more regenerative agrotourism and get more people connected to, to these processes and, and the culture? So it's been great having you. Great. Thank and you. I look forward to seeing the video and then sharing it around. And yeah. if anybody's interested, uh, Refi Sicilia, R I F A I S I C I L. You, you 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 will comment on the on the video sure, and sure. and then I will pin it to the top or put it in the description uh, all the information you want so that's great thank you very much and see you next time bye here are the fava beans that we cleared from weeds so they are looking good very healthy and you can see the small fava bean pods around here they are looking nice hazelnut transplant two months ago maybe, maybe more and still alive that's good loquats look like plum but uh, it seems like a different fruit i never seen this before i never tried it before in my life so it's kind of sweet and sour I don't know if they come, become completely sweet if they ripen up. This is um, the seed. Very interesting. I like it. It's like sourish. <laughs>